I would like to now apply that to a relationship. I got married last year. Yes. My beautiful wife is right back here. Yes. I, for myself, I created a long-lasting, loving relationship with my wife. How can I assure myself that I can stay committed in that relationship? By making your vortex more important than her. Because if you make her more important and she's out of the vortex and you're dancing around trying to please her, now you're both out of the vortex and in time you will come to resent her and you'll be looking for a new job. Wife. <laughs> but if you care mostly about being in the vortex, then, then what you're actually saying is you don't have to stand on your head to please me because my relationship with my vortex, which is essential to my being is not dependent upon your behavior. <laughs> Jerry told himself that over and over this last week. <laughs> Because if his happiness was dependent upon Esther being happy, he was screwed. <laughs> they were both in overwhelmment mode. In other words, too much happening too fast. In other words, get in the vortex. Your vortex, the relationship, in other words, here, here's a, another way of looking at it. Uh, the same way, but m with more detail. So who you really are many people think that they're dead or alive non-physical or physical when the reality of it is you are non-physical energy a part of which is here in this physical body and the larger part of you remains non-physical even though the physical part of you is here so as you are, you have two vibrational aspects going on all of the time the the goal is to be as close in vibrational sync as possible and when you understand that your inner being will not come out of the vortex to sync up with you then your mission is clear in other words Esther can go to Jerry and complain and sometimes she can get him to go there with her but we never come we never come and Jerry is resistant to do so he does not want to come and complain with Esther which makes Esther mad at him you have to get used to that in other words, because she thinks if he really cared, he would support her in her out of the vortexness. you see. But it's not good for her and it's not good for him. It's much better if he behaves like her own inner being does and stays in the vortex and says, you want to play with me? Come on over here. The weather's great here. The air is fragrant here. Life is good here. The body is healthy here. The, the abundance is abundant here. Well-being is here in the vortex. I'm not coming out there. You say. So maybe I should be talking to Jerry. <laughs> <clears throat> so so if, I, if, if I understand that correctly, we can, we can help each other to honor our own well, vortices. You see, here, here, here's, hear what we said earlier. So you get into the vortex, whether, whether you're driving your car and loving it, whether you're out playing golf and loving it, whatever it is that you're doing that you're loving, you get into the vortex and knowing that you're in there, you milk being in there by feeling the appreciation that is so easy to feel for your relationship and for your wife while you're in the vortex. You practice that vibration. You practice the feeling of the relationship from inside the vortex. And as you practice the feeling of it from inside the vortex so that the relationship as far as you are concerned only has this one vibrational frequency it's love and appreciation and joy and expansion and feeling of well-being and longevity and eternalness in other words you practice the vibration of that from inside the vortex law of attraction is not going to match you up with stuff that doesn't match that but what happens to people so many people outside the vortex having an argument or having discomfort or having whatever and wanting to talk about their relationship from outside the vortex and what we want you to understand is we can talk about it and we can help you understand that it could be better but you do so you have so much more leverage from inside the vortex go to the vortex and then think about your relationship go to the vortex and then call your sweetheart go to the vortex and then have a conversation go to the vortex and then make love go to 
to the vortex and then go shopping. Go to the vortex, go to the vortex, go to the vortex and then. Go to the vortex and then. Go to the vortex and then. But most relationships say, or, or the way they play out is, I don't feel so good and if you'd behave differently, I would feel better. Oh, not going to do that? You mean you're not going to buck my current and be different than I am evoking from you right now? What happens? So people will say, so here I am and I want this and it's different than what she wants and she wants that. So I want this and she wants that. What do we do? And we say, well, if you think about what you want from inside the vortex, when you think about it and plan for it and feel good about it, if you line up with it, then the universe is going to deliver it to you. And if she thinks about what she wants and lines up with it, the universe is going to deliver that to her. And it can even be different things about the same thing and you can both get exactly what you want. It's that, there's that much to choose from. You can both get exactly what you want if you are both lined up with what you want. But most people... Instead of him thinking about what he wants and becoming a perfect match to it, he worries about what she wants, which is different from what he wants. So he's all cluttered in his vibration. Instead of her thinking about what she wants, she worries about what he wants. And so now her vibration's all cluttered. So they both got cluttered vibrations. Neither one gets what they want. They both blame each other. And then they want a new job. I'll take the new job. We know that you're not talking about that relative to your relationship and we know that you are fine-tuning here But we only have one story We have only one story You paid way too much for this seminar it's a, We say the same thing over and over and over and over again Go to the vortex and then we're done it go really is vortex. that simple. Go to the vortex, go to the vortex. Care about how you feel. Care about how you feel and notice that you can do something about how you feel. And if you're out of the vortex, then you just want to lean in the direction of it. In other words, we talked about leaning downstream. You can feel when, when there's less resistance or more. And really, in every moment, you only have two emotional choices, to feel a little better or to feel a little worse. And if you are, if your intent, if, if you've made this vortex, your dominant intention, then what happens is you'll learn to allow yourself entry into it more often. For years, we've been offering a perfect analogy that your high vibration, which is who you really are from your source energy vantage point is from your physical perspective, resistance free. There is resistance in every particle of everything even in the non-physical we can feel vibrational fluctuations but from your vantage point the vibration of what is non-physical is so absent of resistance from your point of view that it, it's it's unspeakable you could not discern it so that high good feeling vibration is like the cork bobbing on the surface of the water now you can hold that cork under the water but as soon as you let go of it, it's going to bob right back up. And that is to say, you can hold yourself out of your vortex. But as soon as you let go of whatever it is that you've got going on in your vibration that's keeping you out of the vortex, the vortex will take you right back in. So that's why in the death experience, when you withdraw your attention, in you go. When you meditate and you quiet your mind, in you go. But the thing about... When you go to sleep at night, you, you withdraw your consciousness and vibrationally speaking, in you go. But here's the thing that is tricky. Where if you go to sleep out of the vortex, even though in you go while you're asleep, when you wake up, you wake up right where you went in. That's why we want you to practice the in the vortex while you're awake. In other words, train your vibration to the higher frequency as best you can. So if you're not in the vortex and you know it because you're ornery, you're irritated, you're frustrated, you're overwhelmed, you're mad, you're guilty, you're blameful. In other words, if you're not in the vortex, you know it, you can tell by the way you feel, then just reach for the best feeling thought that you can find. But what we really are recommending these days is we're watching so many of you. We, we watch you all balled up in the details of your now reality as if it means something. When all it ever was, was the bouncing off place for what really has happened in the vortex and who you really are. This is the thing that we want so much for you to understand. Who you really are is a lover. And when you're not loving, you're ripping yourself apart, even though they don't seem to deserve to be loved. Those rascals, they don't deserve to be loved, you say. But... It makes no difference if you don't, it doesn't matter what they deserve. You deserve to be a lover. 
And if you're focused upon someone who doesn't deserve to be loved, then you're misusing your ability to focus and your inner being never does that, you see. So as you are out of the vortex and, and you do your best to release the resistant thought, the vortex will take you in. But the real power and leverage comes from catching yourself. Oof, I'm in the vortex just for a moment. Recognize it, revel in it, feel it milk it practice it and you'll be more likely to be there more often so commitment commitment if we were standing in your physical shoes we would make a commitment to our vortex and we would let law of attraction take care of everything else very good I love you and thank you. Now what? Let's wait until after a segment of refreshment because knowing you, you are a lot of trouble. Good time for a segment of refreshment. <laughs>